Hi, in this topic we're going to learn about sampling distribution. So it's nothing very fancy here. We have already learned a discrete probability distribution and continuous distribution. And these distributions um, told us about how a variable changes, right? By having a, a specific probability distribution for a variable, you can, for example, find the mean of this variable, the variance, standard deviation, etc. So you can get a lot of information about this variable. Specifically, um, I'm going to uh, remind you of the normal distribution that you have learned. So we, we learned that a variable X can have, a, an, a, when, when a variable X has a, a normal distribution and we know its parameters, which is the mean and standard deviation, we can uh, tell a lot about this variable, spe specifically about the probability of the variable X being within a certain range. We're going to um, observe something very similar here. Why? Because sampling distribution is nothing but a, as you will learn later, a normal distribution for a very specific type of variable where we're not talking about X anymore, but we're talking about an average of X's, right? And that's it. This is the only thing that will change. Okay, and also I'm going to introduce you another variable, but step by step. But for now, I just want to relieve you that there is nothing fancy here. All right, if you understand the normal distribution of variable X, this topic would be very easy for you. All right, so I hope that I got you excited and let's start. We're going to start with, a, with an example. Uh, as I told you many times, um, starting a topic with an example, with a quantitative example, is an excellent method to put you in the right picture. And once you are there, then everything will be very familiar with you. So um, this is how we're going to start. And then we're going to talk about three types of distributions. They will all have a normal distribution. So as I promised you before, Right. So we're going to talk about uh, the distribution of an average, right? Of uh, so an average of variable x, uh, and if we know um, the distribution of x, then we will be able to tell what's the distribution of the mean of this x. Then we're going to talk about the distribution of the proportion. Right? What's the proportion? It's the number of values divided by, or it's it's a number divided by a total number. All right, very very simple. And finally, we're going to talk about a variable which is a difference between two means. Again, don't get uh, 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 don't be scared with these terms. As you will see later, everything will boil down to uh, answering a probability statement about a normally distributed variable. All right, I promise you that. So let's kick in. All right, so we're going to use this example throughout uh, the topic, uh, which is a good thing because you will be familiar with the context of the problem or the example, and um, then you'll see how we are changing the, the, the context of the question. So here what do we have? A director of the personnel, department of a company, uh, Electronics Associate Inc. So we'll call it EAI from now on, okay, to abbreviate that. Um, this director wants to develop a profile for his manager and he has 2,500 managers. Now, the profile is very simple. All what he needs to know, what's the mean annual salary of his managers, all right? And what's the proportion of the manager who undertook a certain training program. That's it, very simple profile. So let's see what, the, what data he collected and what he could get from this data. All right, so you can see here that, um, of course, he's the director of the personnel, so he has access to all, all uh, the data about the employees. So what he did, he summarized these two values for all the 2,500 managers you can see here. Okay, so he collected all these. Of course, we cannot show you all the table. So we're showing you an extract for this table where we have the salaries, the annual salary of the of every manager, and whether this manager has undertook a training or not. So you can see here a no and a yes, right? So what we can tell from that? 
very simple you know he needs to um build a profile for his managers so a mean is very good uh metric for him right so yes every manager has different salary but he can then summarize everything with what we have learned that that the mean is a very good measure for central location so he can get the mean and this is a population mean right because these are all his managers so that's why i'm calling it mu so mu happened to be fifty one thousand eight hundred dollars per year now from that we can also he, he he could get the standard deviation right very easy we could we we uh, we can find it easily how we learned that from the discrete probability distribution right by for example i can add the column where i subtract the mean from uh, the salary from the mean and then square it sum it up divide by n and then uh, and then square with that to get the standard deviation all right so we get standard deviation of 4000 and finally we we want to find the proportion of the um, of the managers who undertook the training how do we get this we simply sum up or we simply count the uh, the rows where we have yes so these are the managers who undertook the training and we divide by 2500 and this happened to be 0 0.6 so 60 percent of the managers uh, undertook the training right so this is the profile that he he was looking for so let's see in the next slide what could be the problem then all right so here we're going to um, to assume a hypothetical situation uh, that this director does not have an access to all the information that's why i'm saying it's hypothetical because in fact he would have right an access to the information he's the director after all of the personnel department so let's say just for the discussion's sake that he does not have the information well, what do you think what what he has to do so far now throughout the course you should be able to guess what what's the next step for him right so yes he will he's going to estimate this right he go he wants to estimate the population mean and he wants to estimate the uh, the proportion that we found to be 60 percent and the mean that we found to be 51,800. Uh, 8, 51, he wants to estimate it what do you think how we can estimate that yes i hope that you guessed you guessed correct he will select the sample so let's assume that he selected a sample of 30 managers okay so let's uh, let's observe the data that he collected and see what we can do with that data so this is the data that he collected. Remember, this is a data for, for example, of 30 managers. So that's why here I can have, uh, show you all the data that we collected. And you can see that this is number 30, right? We have 30 managers. So for every manager, we have the salary collected and whether the manager has undertook a training or not. So now it's very easy for us to, <clears throat> to find the mean of these 30 managers right what they mean you sum up their salaries you divide by 30 and we get 51,270 pretty um, close to what we know about the population mean right which was 51,800 but remember here here we are assuming that we don't know mu but look at this this is what we get now what else we can get we can get also the standard deviation as I, uh, as you learned before, this is how we find the variance, which we sum up the distance square and we divide by n minus one because this is a sample. And then when we square root that, we get the standard deviation, all right, which is three three six four. Also, not very far from the uh, standard deviation of the population, which was four thousand. And finally, the proportion of these, we can get it by simply summing up the yeses okay and divide by 30 here so we get 63 percent also very close to the population proportion which was 60 percent so what do we have here <clears throat> these underlined values we call these the point estimators right why point estimators because we are trying to estimate a population for example mean by one value which is a sample mean and we're trying to uh, to estimate the standard deviation of the population by one value only one value all right which is the standard deviation of the sample and finally we're trying to to estimate the the population proportion also using one value which is this one 0 
with the proportion. Okay, and this is the first kind of, uh, or the first method that now we have learned in our inferential statistics. Remember when we started this course, we said that the ultimate objective of the course is to reach a, a stage where you will be doing inferential statistics, okay, which is drawing information about the population from samples. However, point estimators have a problem, all right, and we'll talk about that later. But for now, we're happy to have these. Let's see how we're going to proceed with this example. So let's um, let's select another another sample just for the fun of it. Okay, so we're selecting another sample again of 30 managers. Let's see what we get. So now we have a new point estimators, right? Because th these are coming from the other sample, where now we can see this is 0 0.7, different from the 0 0.63, and this is 52670, right? Which is also different from the previous one. So what do we notice here? Or what do we expect here? We expect that each time we will select another sample randomly of also 30 managers, okay, most probably we're going to get different values of X bars. So let me show you an exercise that was done. Of course, in real life, you should not do that. It doesn't make sense. But let's just for the sake of discussion again, see what happens when we collected 500 different samples and each sample consists of 30 managers. Okay, look what happens here. So what we can see, of course, for every sample, we have a sample mean and we have a proportion. So what you can see in this table, what do you see in this table? What we can see is that X bar has 500 values, right? All these values are the values of an X bar. And all these values are value of a P bar. And what does it mean? That means now we are observing two different variables, We're t right? Because yes, X bar <coughs> is a, it's a measure of central location, but when X bar has 500 values, so it's a variable now, right? It's a variable called X bar, and this variable is called P bar. That's it. And I'm going to show you step by step how we're going to observe or how we're going to deal with this variable exactly the same way how we used to deal with any variable X that has a normal distribution. All right, so I hope that you are starting to get the notion of what we are trying to do in this uh, in this topic. Okay, we will come step by step. So let's focus now on one of these two variables that I was talking about in the previous slide, and I want to focus first on x bar. Okay, so x bar, we as you could see from the previous table, it became a variable. It has in that table 500 values. So it has all the properties of a variable, right? And because it has so many values, so it has its own mean also, it has its standard deviation, it has a probability distribution of a certain form. We're going to talk about that, okay, very, very soon. Now, we call that probability distribution a sampling distribution, all right? That's it. As I told you in the introduction, this is what we mean by sampling distribution. It's just a name that we give to the probability distribution of a very specific type of variable, which is the X bar, okay? The mean of samples, that's it. So next we're going to uh, learn more about the properties of a sampling distribution and why it is very useful for us for the inferential statistics.